Okay, so this is our double mole mountain stoichiometry video. Let's first talk about what makes these problems different than single mole mountain. If you recall from single mole mountain video and from the practice ones we were doing, we did not have a reaction. We only worked from one mountain. We never had to use a molar ratio because in single mole mountain problems, we were only working with a single compound per question. Whereas when we start annotating this, we're gonna see that there are multiple compounds. So we have to decipher which parts of this reaction to look at when we get into molar ratio, okay? But let's start where we always start, and that is annotation. Because one of the hardest things about the double mole mountain problems um, are sometimes students struggle figuring out where they start. But not you guys, because you are <laughs> great annotators. So we're doing a circle or numbers. And then we're underlining units. So again, we're looking for grams, moles, or particles, which is atoms or molecules. Except this time, we are going to circle or underline the unit, oh my goodness, the unit and who that unit belongs to. So here we're not going to just underline grams. We're going to say grams of NH3. The other unit, I see grams. Grams of who? Grams of H2O. Now some of you are going to say, but what about this O2 over here? That doesn't have a unit around it. If you read the question, it's really just saying that this is reacting with oxygen. Um, there's no unit there. So if you let the annotations guide you, it'll help you get rid of any information that's not relevant to calculating the problem, okay? So we always start with the number and the unit attached to it. Grams of NH3. That means mountain A is NH3. So we're starting here and going towards grams of H2O, which means if every line is a step and you cannot go where there's not a path, this will be a one, two, three step problem, ending with grams of H2O. So let's go ahead and set this up, starting with our number, grams in H3. So notice I have the unit and the compound here. And let's set up our three steps. Now we're gonna fill in units to cancel. And these are a little bit more difficult, a little bit trickier than the single wall mountain to keep up with. But you, being the amazing student you are, are going to keep up with your annotations um, in terms of compounds, not only the unit. So here, just like before, if we have grams of NH3, we need for this to cancel. Because ultimately I'm trying to get just grams of H2O. So this entire unit, I put it at the bottom. From grams of NH3, my next unit would be mole. Mole of who? Mole of NH3. This entire unit needs to cancel because it's not my final destination. So I'm gonna take it down to the bottom. From mole of NH3, I'm gonna go to mole of H2O. This unit has to cancel. Take it to the bottom. And then my final step. So when I take a step back, my unit should cancel exactly diagonally. The only unit that doesn't cancel is on top of the last conversion. Now between these three steps, we need to figure out where the molar ratio is. So if you look at the comparison of units, this is a mole to gram comparison. That is not a molar ratio. Gram to mole, not a molar ratio. But here, we have mole on top of mole, a comparison of moles, which, my friends, is a ratio. So I'm gonna just put a box around this because that box in that box is the only place that the mole has the possibility of equaling something other than one. And we're gonna get the molar ratio from our balanced equation. Which part? Specifically the coefficients. And because you annotated with the compound there, I know which coefficient to put where. If you just had mole over mole, a lot of times kids will make very silly mistakes, okay? <clears throat> so inside of this, we're gonna fill in the numbers by looking at the coefficients. So on top we have mole of H2O, so find H2O. That six goes here. In H3, there are four. So now outside of that, our rules go back to exactly the same as they were before. Mole is one, mole is one. Grams tells me to find molar mass. Here we're finding the molar mass of NH3. 
Here we're finding the molar mass of H2O. Okay, and again, if you need a refresher on that, look in the first video. Right now we're just gonna set this up by multiplying everything on top. Divided by everything on bottom. Again, if you don't include the ones, that's totally fine. I just do it to show students like where everything is coming from. So we're gonna put this in our calculator. 56.8 times six times 18. Close the parentheses, divided by, new set of parentheses. 17 times four, close parentheses. So 90.21, and then make sure my unit, grams of H2O. So this is our final answer. Okay, so let's look at some more problems. Let me take this down right quick so it doesn't go moving everywhere on us. Okay, so for these, we're gonna use um, the same reaction for all three problems. So first step, annotate. So we have 100 grams of H2O, and then we're looking for moles of this. So we know that we always start with the number of the unit attached to it. So we are starting at grams H2O, and we are going towards mole of Fe2O3. So this would be one, two steps. Well, I'm just gonna keep going with this purple marker there. <laughs> now we need our units. If we have grams of H2O, grams of H2O needs to cancel on the bottom. From grams of H2O, we have to go to mole of H2O. Carry this down, it has to cancel. From mole of H2O, we need mole Fe2O3. Notice, I don't have to go to either one of these, so don't do more work than you have to. We're gonna find the molar ratio. So mole to gram, that's not it, mole to mole. Remember here, we're looking for the coefficients from the balanced equation. On top, mole of Fe2O3. There isn't a coefficient there, so I know it's a one. H2O, this should be a three. Outside of that, mole is still gonna equal one. Grams, H2O. The molar mass of H2O is 18 grams. Put this in our calculator. Both of these are ones, but I'm just gonna put it there just so you can see it. 18 times three. 100 times one times one divided by 18 times three, 1.85 mole Fe2O3. Okay, so we're just gonna keep trucking along. Again, if you need to pause it and you wanna try it and catch back up with us, feel free to do that. Okay, with this one, we have 16.5 grams, Fe2O3, and then I see atoms of Fe. Notice H2 is irrelevant, there are no units attached to it. And for this one, I'm gonna write with my Sharpie. So we always start with the number and the unit attached to it. Okay, that means we're starting here at grams. Um, then we are going towards atoms, which is particles of Fe. So this will be one, two, three steps. Now we need to make sure our units cancel. If we have grams of Fe2O3, from grams of Fe2O3, moles of Fe2O3. That needs to cancel. Um, from here, you have to go to 
mole of Fe. That needs to cancel. For mole of Fe, we go to particles of Fe. Find our molar ratio, mole over mole. Here, we're going to go to the balance equation. On top, we have Fe, which is a 2. Fe203, which is a 1. Outside of that, we go back to regular mole, regular rules. So we have here, mole is 1, mole is 1. Particles, 1 mole of anything, has 6.02 times 10 to 23 particles. This gram, again, the molar mass, and actually we will um, work this one out quickly off to the side. So we have Fe, we have two of them. And then if you look up Fe on the periodic table, bounce the nearest hole, that's 56. And then we have oxygen, there are three of them. They each weigh 16. This one 12, right? And this would be 160, I did that right. <laughs> All right, so this would be 160, so that's the number that would go here. Now, whoopsie, I'm going to continue this work right over here. Don't mind us. So now I'm gonna put everything on top. I'm gonna to leave out this one right here. Close parentheses. And again, these two ones, I'll put them there because I have space for them. Okay, so this one is um, a little bit trickier in this calculator if, if you're not comfortable with working with the exponents. Okay, but you're gonna put it in exactly like that. So we're gonna say parentheses, 16.5 times two times 6.02 times 10, y to the x, 23, close parentheses, divided by, new set of parentheses, 160, close parentheses, and this will be our answer. So we have 1.24 times 10 to the 23, and then my answer would be particles or atoms of Fe. And again, that answer makes sense because it's asking me about atoms. So my answer should have an exponent. Um, one thing I, I want to note right here, you don't see the times 10, um, but it is there, so make sure that you write it. And finally, this one right here. I know this is probably a long video. Again, you can, ever, you can pause it and do whatever if you don't need anymore. So we have number, unit, unit. So we're starting with six mole. Y'all, I keep going back and forth between this. <laughs> Y'all just stay with me. Bless my heart. So we have six small H2O. So we're starting here of H2 going towards mole H2O. A mole to mole. That's one easy step. If you have mole of H2O on top, it needs to be on the bottom to cancel. Then we go to mole H2O. Well, there's only one step, so that has to be the molar ratio. If you're ever doing a double mole mountain problem and you're converting between two, um, converting between two compounds, two different compounds, there has to be a molar ratio in your setup. So if there's only one step, that has to be the molar ratio. Mole of H2O, H2. Oh, and notice this is a three to three ratio, which is a one to one. But we're just gonna. Man, you can put it in your calculator, but I know it's gonna be six mole H2O.